But some underground places have actually survived by drowning. How do we know this? There's one haunting place in America where it's already happened. 40 years after people. Rusting remnants of human civilization continue to decay underground. But some places have escaped the depths of destruction ravaging the below ground world. For decades, man pulled millions of dollars worth of minerals out of the ground here at the Bon Terre Mine near St. Louis, Missouri. Lead from the mine was used in car batteries, house paint, and to make bullets. Ammunition that was used from World War I through Vietnam. The Montier Mine, they began surface mining here in 1860. That diamond drill was actually developed here. And then steam-driven drill was too. Many, many mining tools uh, that are used today were originally developed here at Montier Mine. In the 1960s, Bon Terre was declared mined out and abandoned. When the mining pumps shut off, the natural groundwater began to rise, creating dual underground worlds. When you come in here, you've just entered another world. You haven't just come into a place that isn't exactly what you expected, because it's much larger than you expected. You've entered into a completely different world where you've, you've lost your senses. Huge pillars reach to a ceiling that's 300 feet above the mine floor. But to reach that floor requires an oxygen tank. Because today, much of the Bon Terre mine is preserved underwater. One of the things that fascinates me is how time has really come to a halt. Uh, so much of the biological world, the things that we know are going on are driven by oxygen. And oxygen is the high octane fuel by which things decay, by which things break down. And here in this environment where the water has come in and flooded this, it's pushed the oxygen out of the mine and now, basically, the processes are still going on, but they're going on in slow motion. It's life in the slow lane. Concealed in the depths of this billion-gallon lake is a mining town frozen in time. You're diving a time capsule. It's like Superman soaring in the past, because when you're diving in the mine, you're in crystal clear water. And that's one of the very few places you can get the feeling that the diver is actually soaring through the water. Once, this staircase clattered with the boots of workers headed down into the mines. Shovels, jackhammers, and drills remain where they were left on the day the mine shut down. They just left a drill right in the side of the mine. It's just sticking out there, hanging in by the bit. Over a period of the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, it will begin to corrode more and finally just pull away from the wall and collapse and sit down on the bottom where it'll continue to rust away. Even the locomotive used to shuttle lead ore to the surface remains as a ghostly reminder of the decades of backbreaking labor carried out on this spot. Just below us is one of the uh, many tipples that we find in this mine. That's the place where the ore car comes to a stop and dumps its ore out. And of course, that's made out of some low-grade steel. And that's now serving as an energy source for whatever the biotic community is that's living on that iron. And over a period of time, they'll use all the nutrients out of that and turn that iron into iron oxide, into rust, and it'll be gone at that point. All the things that supported this operation were down underground. They built these engineering offices against the back of these pillars. They put doors and windows in them, and they even put air conditioners in them to control the humidity. So you had a basic office building, literally several hundred feet underground, which is now over 100 feet underwater. When it was time for a break, miners didn't head for the surface. Instead, they stayed below, 
visiting a drinking fountain that's now overflowing. A locker room, once home to the chatter and clatter of miners hoping to survive just one more day, now deathly still. So why was this mine abandoned? Everything was left behind here in the name of progress. There was no need to harvest any of that equipment. What was the use, you know, pickaxes? They didn't use pickaxes anymore. They didn't use the shovels anymore. Modern mines all have loaders, and the last thing a miner probably wants to do is steal a shovel from the mine because that just means he's going to have to do more digging when he gets home. So what's the use? The Bonterre mine is filled with examples of how different environments can lead to vastly different decay rates. Here we see the, uh, what the action of the fast lane's like. This is a railroad tie, it's rotting. It's got a biotic community which is living in there, which is turning it into just this powder. It's all because it's feeding on oxygen. It's using the oxygen as the oxidizer here as opposed to the stuff underwater, which hasn't got access to that. This will be gone completely in a few more years, whereas the stuff underwater still doesn't look like it's even been touched. It's quite a difference. Today, the Bonterre mine is used as a scuba resort. Divers from all over the world come to witness firsthand the processes that will have a big impact on life after people we'll see small pieces of iron actually flaking off. And that process is just happening so much more slowly than it would be happening out in the real world where big hunks of iron are rusting away and falling off. And here it's just little flakes over a long time. Man excavated the Bonterre mine, a punctured hole in the earth. In a life after people, it will remain as a watery time.